Allahu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin amma ba'd qala al musannif rahimahullahu ta'ala Imam Ibn al Hajar al Salani rahimahullah fi kitabihi Bulug al Maram min Adillat al Ahkam hadith number 322 fi bab salati Salat al-Jama'ah wa Imamah. Naam. Alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah. Last video, it was very... Can you check the volume? Yeah. Wa'an Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal. Ihtajara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hujratan mukhassafatan. Fasalla fiha. Fatatabba'a ilayhi rijalun. وجاءوا يصلون بصلاته الحديث فيه أفضل صلاة المرء في بيته إلا المكتوبة متفق عليه. This hadith is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari in Muslim. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he made a small place in Masjid al-Nabawi, a small separate place away from where he used to lead the prayers. Where he kept a separate mat and there he used to perform some Nawafil prayers. Another wording it says that Abdul Salat al Mar'i fi baytihi ill al Maktuba. The best prayers for a man, the best prayers for a man are the prayers which are in their house, except for the obligatory prayers. So when it comes to obligatory prayers, as we are discussing, we have to perform it in the jama'ah, in the masjid. But when it comes to the nawafil or the sunnah prayers, it is better that you perform those prayers in your houses. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, لا تجعلوا بيوتكم كبورا Do not make your houses as the graveyards. So by reciting, by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by prostrating, by making rugu, what happens? This, the Allah's barakah will descend in the houses. But sometimes what happens if you are at workplace or if you are busy, then what you can perform in the masjid. There is no problem in performing in the masjid. But what is better is to perform at a houses. Some people also have this kind of, you know, what do you say, laziness for example. They are good when they perform sunnah nawafil in the masjid. So once they go home, they, they might probably feel lazy. They might think, you know, okay, after 5 minutes, after 10 minutes, after 15 minutes, until the time goes away and they won't perform. So in that case, if he, if he fears that he is going to miss his nawafil prayers, sunnah prayers, after the prayers, after the salah in the house, then let him pray in the masjid, inshallah. That, that's the ruling. Hadith number 300, 323. وَعَنْ جَابِرْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ أَنْهُ قَالَ صلى معاذ بأصحابه العشاء فتوّل عليهم فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتريد أن تكون يا معاذ فتانا إذا إذا أممت الناس فقرة بالشمس والضحاها وسبح اسم ربك العالى وقرة باسم ربك والليل إذا يغشى متفق عليه ولفظ للمسلم الله أكبر Rasul Jabir bin Jabir radiyallahu anhu he says that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he addressed Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu Salla Mu'adh bi ashabihi al-isha Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu he led the prayers for, for some of the companions in the isha prayers what Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu he used to do is he used to perform along with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that, he used to go to another masjid and he used to lead the prayers. One thing what we understand here is that he has already prayed what is obligatory upon him. Now, if he is praying in the other masjid or if he is leading in the other masjid, that is nawafil for him. So, his niyyah is nawafil. But the people who are praying behind him is the niyyah of the obligatory. So, there is no problem in leading the prayers. Some of the ulama, they say that no. You can't, a person who is leading the nawafil can't lead the 
obligatory prayers. This is the opinion of Hanabila, but majority of the scholars they say, and we have a clear proof from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Mu'adh radiallahu anhu used to lead the pray- he used to read the prayers behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, later he used to go and lead the prayers. Once what happens, Fatawala alayhim, he used to, what he used to do is, he used to prolong the prayers. Once this particular incident happened that, Mu'adh radiallahu anhu was leading Isha, a sahabi comes inside. And Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, when he started the surah, when he started the surah, this sahabi who was praying behind Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, he left the prayers. He left the prayers, he went back, he prayed by himself, then he left. Somebody informed Mu'adh that such and such person did like this. Then Mu'adh said, verily he is a munafiq. Really, he is a munafiq, hypocrite. When this man came to know that Mu'adh called him munafiq, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining on, complaining about Mu'adh radiallahu an. And who is Mu'adh? You know that who is Mu'adh? Mu'adh radiallahu an is from among the scholars of the scholars, among the companions. Umar radiallahu anhu, he says that Alamuna bil harami wal halali Mu'adh. The one who knows more about the haram and halal is Mu'adh radiallahu an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the hadith, Yes, Anna al-Mu'adh yahti yawm al-Qiyamah. Mu'adh will come on the day of judgment, wa yasbiqoon al-ulama bi-rahat. And he used to be, he'll be far ahead of the scholars, far ahead of the scholars. For an example, if you, if you throw a stone, as long as the, go, the, the stone goes and falls, that far distance he will be in the darajat in Jannah. Allahumma sta'an. This is Mu'adh radiallahu an. And Mu'adh radiallahu an, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an, he says that, and there is an ayah in the Quran, Inna ummatan, Inna Ibrahima kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. This ayah. What is the meaning of the ayah? Inna Ibrahima, Inna Ibrahima kana umma. Ibrahima lesson is a umma. And the one who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word ummah here means leader. Normally what we know ummah is the community, group of people. But ummah means there are four kinds of meaning. One of the meanings of ummah is the leader, the one who is leading, the ummah, the imam. Once Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, he said, Inna mu'adha kana ummatan qanitan lillah. So one of the persons along with him who was sitting him, he said that, Ya mu'adh, ya, ya ibn Mas'ud, Verily, you have recited this verse wrong. Allah says, Inna Ibrahima kana ummah. Then Abdullah bin Mas'ud says, Verily, I did not make any mistake. For us, Mu'adh radiallahu an is a leader for us, ummah. That was the status of whom? Mu'adh radiallahu an among the companions. And behind he called one person Munafiq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him and said, Ya Mu'ad, aturidu an takuna Mu'ad fatana. Do you want to become fitna for the people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells whom? Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. Why? The reason is here is that Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, he used to prolong the prayers. And it is not from the sunnah that you prolong the prayers and make difficult behind those who are praying. And he said, further he said, Ida amant nas and if you are leading, if you are Imam in the congregation, then recite some of the verses like Washamsi wa Duhaha and Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-Ala Surah Al-Ala or recite Wallayli Ida Yadusha. These are small surahs. It doesn't take more than 1.2 minutes, 2 minutes to recite the surah, entire surah, isn't it? So make things easy for those who are praying. Do not prolong long, long prayers. Allahumma sta'an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa rebuked Mu'adh radiallahu anhu and we know just now we, we told that Mu'adh radiallahu anhu was from among the scholars, from among the scholars, among the sahaba radiallahu anhu. So what about those people who are leading the prayers long and long, making things difficult? And this is not from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when it comes to, this ruling applies when it comes to the obligatory prayers. 
because there are people among the mu'min, those who are standing behind the imam, who are weak, who are old, there are women who are breastfeeding the child, and there are people who are, has to, they have some, uh, you know, need to attend. So make the salah very short. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you are praying alone, if you are praying alone, recite Surah Al-Baqarah, recite Surah Imran, Surah Al-Nisa in one rakah, la basa bih. There is no problem. But you can't do that in congregational prayer. So imams of the masajid, they have to keep in the mind that make things easy for the people who are praying behind you. Now, let's go to the hadith number 324. anha في قصة في قصة صلاة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالناس وهو مريض قالت فجاء حتى جلس عن يساره أبي بكر فكان يصلي بالناس جالسا وأبو بكر قائما يقتدي أبو بكر بصلاة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ويقتدي الناس بصلاة أبي بكر متفق عليه very very important hadith it's a very important hadith and there is, there is a lot of masail, mas'ala in this hadith. There is a lot of masail in this hadith. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that about what happened to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was very sick at the end of his life. At the end of his life for about five to six days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had extremely high fever. He was not able to get up. He gets up, he falls down. He gets up, he falls, he falls unconscious. He was not able to lead the prayers. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to lead the prayers. Abu Bakr radiallahu to lead the prayers. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was leading the prayers, then comes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in between when he was feeling good. So he comes to the jama'ah and he comes and stands at the left side of the Abu Bakr. That means now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is taking charge of the Imam. The Abu Bakr goes a little back. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam sits down and he leads the prayers. Sits down and he leads the prayer. You got my point. There are a few things that we need to mention inshaAllah ta'ala here. This hadith, before going to the mas'ala, I want to talk something about aqidah here. This hadith is a raddun ala shia. This hadith is an refutation of the shia. The shia they say that Imam Ali deserves the khilafah before Abu Bakr and Umar. Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma they forcefully took the khilafah of Ali radiallahu anhu. لو كان عليا أفضل من أبو بكر وعمر إذ علي رضي الله عنه was better than علي وأبو بكر وعمر لقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم would have asked him to lead the jama'ah أيوم الناس but he asked أبو بكر to lead the prayers this is known as استخلاف استخلاف one of the things in the salah is استخلاف means if the imam is not there then he will he will appoint somebody else to lead in his place. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu befitting to lead the jama'ah. Number one. Once what happened, Rasulullah sallallahu was sick and it was time for the prayers. It was time for the prayers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi told, go and find Abu Bakr and ask him to lead the prayers. When he went to the masjid and we searched everywhere, he didn't find Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Then he found Abu Bakr, he didn't, he found Umar radiallahu anhu. Then he asked Umar radiallahu anhu to lead the prayers. When Umar radiallahu anhu led the prayers, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to know that Abu Bakr did not lead the prayers, Umar radiallahu led the prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah did not accept that. Allah did not accept that. When Abu Bakr is present, Umar cannot lead. Allah Akbar. And this is a reputation on the Shia. Shia they claim. Bi manzilati anna Musa bi manzilati Musa Harun wa manzilati Muhammad li Ali radi anna Ali li Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Like how Musa alayhi salam Harun is for as a brother as a wasi 
for the for 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 Musa alayhi salam Ali radiyallahu an is for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they take this hadith and they use this hadith and they refute and they abuse sahaba radiyallahu anhum la'natullahi alayhi ru'usahum al ulama'uhum when we say the malak curse these people i'm not cursing those layman among them those people who create fitna and brought this kind of fitna and bid'ah and innovation shirkiya into the religion of islam so this is a refutation upon the shia so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked abu bakr radiyallahu anhu to lead the prayers and abu bakr is leading radiyallahu an now rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes he comes on the left side he stands so now abu bakr knows that rasul is going to take take the charge he goes little back and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sits abu bakr stands bes- beside him just on the right side and the people behind him all of them will be standing now the masala is that if the imam is sick and if he sits in the beginning of the prayers and lead the prayer sitting all the people behind him will be sitting if the imam is standing then all the people behind him will be standing if the imam is standing and in between he became sick tired and if he sits all the people behind them will be behind him will be standing got my point this is the rule inshallah taala another masala what we have to, what we understand from the hadith is that if the imam who leads the prayers he comes to the masjid he has the right to take over the imam from the person who is leading this is one of the examples but this should not happen every time every time imam is coming late and he is taking the uh, position okay that's not the way that's not the case here in certain cases imam says you lead the prayers if i come then i will take the lead and he has a right to take the lead imam has like try to take the lead am i clear so this are the masala that we need to understand from this hadith another thing is that what we can understand from the hadith is that the imam will not stand on the right side of the musalli the imam will be standing at the left side and people will be standing at the right side and when the saf starts when the saf the row starts the row starts from the right not from the left the only standing on the left it's not it's not valid you can make only on the right it is valid or what is better is make right then make left together that is how it is now this is about first saf what about the second saf the second saf will start from the b- between not from the rear edges rear end of the row it will start from the mid once i went to one of the masajids i was only one standing and i see people coming and joining there i could come tell you know come stand here start from here li anna saf yabda min wasati saf the very the saf will start between the saf that's when the saf starts not from the rear ends of the uh, in the masjid am i clear about this so this with this we understand that imam has all the rights to come and take over the responsibility imam na hadith number 325 wa an abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala idha amma ahadukum an-nas falyukhaffif fa inna fihi mustaghir wal kabir wa dhaif wa dhal haja fa idha salla wahdahu falyusalli kayfa sha'a muttafaqun alayhi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and this hadith is narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu an and this hadith is narrated in sahih al bukhari and muslim authentic hadith rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that idha amma ahadukum an nas and if you are leading if you are imam or if you are leading the prayers for the people fal yukhafif then make your prayers lighter make your prayers light fa inna fihi mustaghir wal kabir wa dhaif wa dhal haja really among them are those who are small children small children among them there are old people among them there are who are weak among them the, there are people who are who are in, who has needs to fulfill when it comes to children how does it matter for example if a child come to the masjid 
children, five years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, they come to the masjid. Their mind is always playful. Okay? And if you lead the prayers long, what happens? He will not come for the next prayers. He will not come for the next prayers. So make it short. This is the hikmah of Rasulullah. So when you make it shorter, what happens? The children will come again. But if you make it long, what happens? They will not come. This is with the children. I am talking even the elders. They know that which masjid is shorter, they will go to that masjid. If the masjid, if the imam is leading long prayers, they will not go there. If the imam is leading short prayers, people, that's a natural tendency of a human being that they will go there. Even though it's a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it clear? That's a natural tendency of a human being. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says here. Well, kabiru, among them there are who are elderly people. Elderly people, you know, with great difficulty they come to the masjid. With big great difficulty they go back. Sometimes they have problems. Sometimes they can't sit long. Sometimes they can't stand long. So make it easy upon them. And among them are married. There are some people who are sick, but yet they come. There are some people sick, the temporary sickness, there is permanent sickness. There are some people, they want to come to the masjid. They want to come to jama'ah and pray and they're sick. For them, it will be easy if you make it lighter. And one more important point in this hadith is wadal hajjah. And take care of those people who are in need. Need in the sense, who are who has to attend their need. For example, uh, you might be going along with the family on a drive or you went to the market and you tell them, you stay here, I'll finish my prayers and come back. Okay? So Imam has to keep in the mind that the masjid is a place where different kinds of people come to the masjid. Travelers will come to the masjid. Those who are passing by will come to the masjid. There are women who come to the masjid. The children who come to the masjid. There are people who leave the job and come to the masjid. There are people who leave the meetings and come to the masjid. There are people who leave the business and come to the masjid. Different varieties of women come to the masjid. And if you are prolonging the prayers, their need will not be taken care of. So if you lighten the prayers, what happened? They get the need and they get the prayers as well. Look at the hikmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Which religion teaches all these things? Which religion? I do not know of any religion which teaches. Believe one thing. One thing keep in the mind. If any religion is making chaos, making the worship difficult, that is not a religion. Islam does not make the worship difficult upon us. Allah is not making things burden upon us. What Allah says in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ حَرَجْ Verily, we have not made our religion tough upon you. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ Allah does not want to make difficult, the deen difficult upon you, but Allah wants to make religion easy upon you. When Allah wants the creator of us for the purpose that he has created us, that is worship. When Allah is making the ibadah, that is worshipping him easy, then who are you to make things difficult upon the believers? This is a point that we need to understand. Allah is merciful, yes or no? Wahuwa Rahim, Wahuwa Rahman, yes or no? That's why He sent a Rahim to the, to the world. Who is that? Wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a Rahim. Hmm? He sent as a mercy to the mankind. So it is not befitting that you make things difficult for the humankind. Allah, this religion of Islam is very, very easy. Inna deena yusr. Really, this religion of Islam is very easy. So when you are leading the prayers, keep in the mind there are many varieties of people who are standing behind you and make the prayers lighter. And if you are, the further wordings say, the further wordings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith is that, فَإِذَا صَلَّ وَحْدَهُ فَلْيُسَلِّي كَيْفَ شَاءً And if you are praying alone, pray however you want. Make ruku longer, make sujood longer, make qira'ah longer, make qiyam longer, no matter what. You can make as you wish. But when you are leading the prayers, make it light. Hadith number 326. 
فليؤمكم أكثركم قرآنا قال فنذروا فلم يكن أحد أكثر مني قرآن فقدموني فقدموني وأنا ابن ست أو سبع سنين رواه البخاري وأبو داود والنسائي very very important حديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عمر بن سلمة رضي الله عنه he says that my father قال أبي my father جئتكم من عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم I come from the true prophet قال فإذا حضر الصلاة when once the time of the prayer came فليؤذن أحدكم then one of you give the other one of you give the other so one of the conditions for the adhan to be valid here is it has to be given when the salah time starts the khul waqt many masajids if you see some of the masajids for example isha is nowadays even some of the 8 o'clock some of the masajid 8 o'clock and the isha actually starts at what time 7.50 and they give adhan 7.45 adhan is invalid adhan is invalid they have to give the adhan again except for fajr except for fajr the two fajr in the sense in the fajr we have two adhan normally one adhan that is before one hour before the tulu is yani uh, tulu il fajr before the fajr starts and that adhan when the fajr starts that exception there but when it comes to other prayers if you give adhan before the time the adhan is invalid but the salah is valid but the salah is valid the adhan is invalid rather you have to give the adhan again so here rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the wording here, here it's very clear faida hadarat salah and the time of the prayer comes falyu'addin ahadukum then one of you should give the adhan falyawmakum aktharukum qur'ana and let the one who knows more qur'an lead the prayers one of the conditions we'll discuss what are the things included in that qala fanadaru he says and they looked for a person who can lead the prayers falam yakun ahadun akthar minni qur'ana and there were no one among the sahaba radiyallahu anhum who knows qur'an more than me and i was a, i was a kid of 6 or 7 years old 6 or 7 years old And they asked me to lead the prayers and he led the prayers. Now the question arises, can a child who hasn't lead, who hasn't reached the age of puberty, Bulu, can he lead the prayers for the people who are elders behind him? Can he lead or not is the question. The ulama have got three opinions on this matter. The ulama has three opinions on this matter. Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah he says that whether the child has reached the age of puberty or not he can lead any prayers he can lead any prayers whether it's obligatory prayers whether it is nawafil prayers like tarawi and other prayers this is the opinion of imam shafi'i rahimahullah based on this hadith another opinion of imam ahmed and imam al malik it is mentioned that only obligatory prayers should be led by a person who reached the age of puberty but when it comes to the nawafil prayers, a boy who hasn't reached the age of puberty can lead. Am I clear? Who hasn't reached the age of puberty can lead. Got my point? He can't lead the obligatory prayers. According to Imam Ahmed and Malik. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, a boy cannot lead whether it is obligatory prayers, whether it is nawafil prayers. But what is Sahih from the Hadith is that you will see what is Sahih from the Hadith is that the Hadith is not restricted to only the one who reached the age of puberty. Any can anybody can lead as long as that boy has more knowledge about the Quran. Is it clear? This is the opinion of this Imam Shafi'i, and this is strongest opinion. This is strongest opinion. But there are many conditions here many conditions for example the boy might be knowing more quran but he doesn't know the rules and regulations of the prayers yes or no the rules and regulations of the prayers 
so the one who knows more rules and regulations of grace will be leading but this sahaba radiyallahu anhum they led the prayers during time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and obviously rasulullah will not come to know about this and if the boy leading the prayers would have been wrong obviously allah subhanahu wa taala would have revealed a verse in the quran or he would have corrected through rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why imam shafi says since sahaba did it rasul was present at the time so there is no issues in this a boy leading the prayers imam ahmed says no obligatory prayers has to be led by the person who has more knowledge it's not about only having the hiv not only having the hiv the next hadith we will explain in detail inshallah we will go to the next hadith is it clear about this masala now no. now a boy can he lead jama at home a boy who reached, did not reach the age of puberty those boys are known as mumayyiz mumayyiz do do the one who's tamiz the one who has tamiz not batamiz <laughs> tamiz the one who has is tamiz tamiz means the ulama the ulama usul al fiqh the ulama they say that tamiz means the one wa huwa yafhamu suwal wa yurd al jawab the one who understand the question and answers the question if you go and ask a boy this boy here where is your father the boy will be like i don't know that's the age of this boy small boys but there are boys between 6 7 8 9 if you ask him where is your father he says my father went to the market he come back he is able to understand the question and he is able to answer the question if you ask him where is your father he says i don't know this boy here small ones that's an example so tamiz this is known as tamiz the so, tamiz is the age from 7 to puberty 7 to puberty but tamiz that is dun tamiz is from 1 to 7 1 to 7 i'm just using this word okay there's no word in usul fiqh called tamiz here i just use it <laughs> anyway so we'll go to the next hadith and we'll explain about some of the etic- some of the uh, characteristics of the imam hadith number 327 وعن ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى انه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ام القوم اقراكم ملك اقراك اقراهم لكتاب الله تعالى فان كانوا في القراءه سواء فعلوهم بسنه فان كانوا في السنس في سنه سواء فاكتبهم الحجره فان كانوا في الحجره سواء فأقدمهم سلمة وفي رواية سنة ولا يؤمن الرجل الرجل في سلطانه ولا يقعد في بيته على على تكريمته إلا بإذنه رواه مسلم عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه he says that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said that يا أم القوم let them let the person who recites the Quran who recites the quran lead the prayers here it is mentioned aqra'uhum not hafid yani hifz he talk the one talks about the one who recites good the previous hadith says the one who has more knowledge about the quran yani the more who has memorized the quran yet this hadith says the one who recites the quran so what is the difference now for example there is a boy there is a there is a person who has memorized quran then another person this person has memorized five ajza there is another person who has memorized 10 ajza okay who is better now the one who memorized 10 but the one who memorized 10 ajza his his recitation is not good his tajweed is not good but the one who memorized five ajza his tajweed is good now whom do you like to lead the prayers the one who knows the rules and regulations that is one thing a person it is not about how much memorized you have how much quran you have memorized it's all about how much you are good in that number one number two if there are two people who has memorized complete quran and this person who has complete memorized complete quran okay then now who will lead this prayers the one who has number one ajwadu bil qiraa the one who has beautiful recitation 
got my point now this person is memorized quran he is also memorized quran and both have beautiful voice who leads the prayer the one who has knowledge the one who has more knowledge about the prayers he will lead the prayer now there is two people who is half it whose recitation is also good and whose elm is also same and who will lead the prayers the one who is elder in age will lead the prayers now both are memorized both are good in recitation both are having similar knowledge and both are same age then who will lead the prayer the one who made hijra first the one who made hijra hijra you know what is the meaning of hijra migration from makkah to madina from makkah to madina hijra okay the that person will lead the prayers for example he has one person has embraced islam 5 years before another one embraces of 5 years later who precedes in amal who precedes in more good deeds the one who embraced before so hijra will make that person better than the one who embraced islam later so when we say hijra when we say hijra it's a migration from the land of kufr to the land of islam we know that so here some of the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that uh, there is no hijra till the day of judgment this is one hadith that means hijra of the people of makkah after fatul makkah there is no hijra because now makkah is a muslim land it is for them but otherwise hijra exists otherwise hijra exists now you can go to one this place to another place and you have all the qualities then you have more deserving to lead the jamaa than a person who did not make hijra is it clear now so these are some of the rules that you have to keep in the mind what if they made hijra all together hijra all together half with and the one who recites is good and the one who is of same age the one who has uh, same knowledge and the one who made hijra both of them they made hijra together now who will lead the prayers the one who has ashrafun nasl from the quraish for example he will lead the prayers you got my point he will lead the prayers so these are the things that you have to keep in the mind when it comes to leading the uh, jamaa all these things what we what i mentioned here is mustahab it is mustahab got my point now we'll go to the second wordings and you will understand much better wala yaumanna rajul rajula fi sultanihi now a masjid is been appointed by masjid appointed imam okay and the imam he don't have much knowledge he is memorized quran he is not like how the other person is in knowledge and taqwa and other things who has more right to lead the prayers the one who is been appointed the one who is been appointed you can't come for example um, a person imam is leading imam is normal person there comes imam al haramain for example <laughs> the imam the haram makkah madina even he do not have right to take the place of the imam who has been appointed except with his permission very clear if he lead the prayers ulama they say the salah is invalid the salah is invalid another example if you see olden days during the khilafa of uh, umayyah and abbasiya some people who are fasik some people who are fasik and fajr the one who sinners the one who kills muslims you know they used to lead the prayers some of the ulama are of the opinion that if that person leads the prayer the salah is invalid this is the opinion of hanabila but imam ahmed rahimahullah he says that salah is valid but it is disliked some of the ulama they say salah is valid for example you know hajjaj bin yusuf hajjaj bin yusuf was one of the governors during time of abba during time of umayyah who used to kill many muslims he is the one who killed abdullah bin zubair radiyallahu anhu he is the one who went to asma radiyallahu anha asma bin abi bakr radiyallahu anha and warned her he told i will drag you with the hair outside hajjaj bin yusuf he is the one who killed said bin zubair and he was a governor and he used to lead the prayers in the masjid 
and people behind him like Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin Masud used to pray behind him. So salah of a fajr, fasid, is fine, absolutely no problem. There is a, there is a, uh, there is a, there is a principle in usul al-fiqh. Uh, this principle is man 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 sahat salatahu sahat imamahu imamatahu. This is the principle. Whoever has made his prayer correct, then his imama being leading the prayer is also correct. So it doesn't differentiate between whether who leads the prayer. As long as he is a Muslim, as long as he worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he is an open sinner or sinning or however it is, if he leads the prayer, you can pray behind him. Absolutely no problem, inshaAllah ta'ala. But imam cannot be a kafir. Imam may not be a mushrik. Imam cannot be a uh, Imam cannot be a woman. A woman cannot lead the jama'ah for the men. A disbeliever can not lead the jama'ah for the believers. A mushrik cannot lead the jama'ah for the believers. Women can lead the jama'ah for the women. Men can lead for jama'ah for the women. Only women. But women cannot lead jama'ah for the men no matter what no matter what the salah will be invalid inshallah so if there is sultan if there is a king if there is a an authority who is leading the prayers nobody has to has the authority to go and take his place am i clear about this now this is very important for example sometimes what happens is uh salah time starts that salah time starts and people are like you know get up and pray lead the prayers get up and lead the prayers Imam is going to come. Let's wait for the Imam. Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. If he doesn't come, then we can lead the prayers. Or if the Imam has appointed you, if he says that, you know, I'll come at this particular time. If I do not come, then you lead the prayers. He appoints somebody to lead the prayer. Who has the right to lead the prayers now? That person has the right to lead the prayers. Nobody has right to come and lead the prayers. So these are the things which shows the discipline in the religion of Islam, which shows the kind of manners in the religion of Islam, which shows there is always the leadership in the religion of Islam. Now, further, وَلَا يَكُعُدُ فِي بَيْتِهِ عَلَى, على تَكْرِيمَتِهِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Another example, Allah Akbar. For example, if you go to a house, somebody called you for food, okay, and you went to that house, and there are no masajids around. So who has a right to be imam in that masjid? The one who? is the whole owner of the masjid. You can't go and say that, you know, I'm an alim, I'm a makki, I'm a madani, and you are nothing. I will lead the prayers. You can't say this. But if he permits to, if he permits you to lead the prayers, then you can lead. But otherwise, you can't lead the prayers. Another example from the adab is that when you go to another house, you can't sit in his place. For example, when you go to the house, you should ask permission. Where should I sit? You can't go and sit wherever you want. You would ask, where should I sit? If he says go and sit there, you should sit there. You can't go and sit in his place wherever he wants. During the olden days, you know, certain people has the authority, caliber and power. They have certain seats. You go and sit in his place. For example, you go to the court and you find the king's chair there, you know, and you go and sit on the king's chair. What happens to you? Then you will not have a chair in the jail. <laughs> that is what happens. So everybody has got their place and the right of that person is more right and you can't take that place in the house even. So you need to ask permission, you can't go and sit. This does not apply only for the guests. This even apply for the family members. For example, you go to the house and you know that your father only sits in this particular place. Your mother sits in that place. Is it clear? You can't go and occupy that place. Except with this permission. Etiquettes, other manners. Some people... They come, relatives. They won't see. They won't see. You know, there is an elderly person in the house, or they won't see. Okay, somebody is coming inside. They will sit. And who are they? Youngsters. Allah, I have seen with my own eyes. They do not have manners at all. If somebody elder comes, you have to get up and give their seat to them. But they will be sitting continuously sitting. Yes or no? They continue sit. This is from not from the akhlaq al muslimin You have to get up and give the seat. And that seat belongs to that person. You have no right to occupy that place. 
when this is the case with the place where you want sitting, what about the Imam? That's the example Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given here. So Islam is all about manners, and manners are not inherited. You can't inherit your manners from your father and mother, wife, children. Manners are learnt. Manners are learnt. So learn the manners from Hadith and Quran, from being being the ulama. Being with the elderly people, sometimes you know elderly people have a lot of manners. They might not have be having a lot of knowledge, but they have manners. The knowledgeable people, elderly people keep accompanying them and learn manners from them. Learn manners from them. Subhanallah, when I used to work in the Patwa Center in the, in the Mazil Haram, we used to learn the fiqh, we used to learn the hadith, we used to learn many things. But we do not know how to apply those things when it comes to uh, manners. So we learned many manners from the, from the uh, muftis of Haram and the uh, Masha'iks of the Haram as to how to answer the people. Different people used to come and ask questions. They used to answer in different ways. And you, that's a manner that you learn. So wherever you are, with whomever you are, always learn something good from them, inshallah, and try to apply that. Not necessarily it has to be in Quran and Sunnah. There are many things culturally also you can learn. There are many things urf wise you can learn and obviously Islam has laid many foundations for us. Let us learn all these things and make us, uh, uh, you know, as a, a person who, who is recognized as manners inshallah. Now, we'll stop here. We'll continue in the next class. Uh, if there are any questions inshallah, we will um, we'll take in our next class inshallah. Barakallah. Any questions online? Uh, If the two people are praying in Jama'ah, <laughs> oh, they, that's a very interesting question. The question is that if the two people praying in the Jama'ah, if a person is leading and a person is standing there, so the one who joins, the one who joins, he will not pull him. <laughs> he should not pull him. Rather, he just, uh, you know, tap him, he will automatically come back, inshallah. If he doesn't come back, don't pull him back. <laughs> Rather, go and stand at the left side of the imam the one will be writing right side the one person standing you go and stand at the left side of the imam so one of the things that we need to understand here is that it is not necessary that imam has to be front that is from the sunnah imam can be along with you in the line along with you in the line but imam will be a step ahead so that you will not cross him inshallah so do not pull him back that's one thing we need to keep in the mind Sorry? Yeah. Mm. Okay. If you are praying in the, uh, uh, the question here is that, the question here is that if you are praying in the office, there is a, in, in, in some, some content, okay, sorry, for Allah. In some companies, there are certain places where there is a designated area for the prayers. So should we give adhan? No problem. Even without adhan? Absolutely no problem. But giving adhan is afdal. Because the jama is established there, inshallah. Not necessarily that you have to give adhan 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before, just 1 2 minutes before the uh, jama starts, you can give adhan and you can pray, inshallah. That is much afdal. Even if you are praying alone, it is afdal to give adhan, but not wajib. But that case, it is much more preferable to give adhan in that particular place. But if there is restrictions in the company because there are non Muslims around, there are different kinds of people around, so do not raise your voice and make it lighter so that, so that it will not cause any inconvenience for the people, inshallah. We have to keep these things in the mind. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, Yeah. Hadith number 320. Okay, if, uh, you, should, you want me to explain? Okay, uh, Imam is sick, Imam is sick. Now, number one, if the Imam is sick, he comes to the masjid, uh, not Imam is sick, for example. If the Imam is standing and praying, all the people will behind will be standing and praying, number one. 
If the Imam sits and pray because of sickness, all the people will be behind will be sitting and praying. If the Imam starts the Salah standing and in between he becomes tired or sick, he sits, the people will continue standing and praying. Is it clear? Yeah. As the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit which I forgot to mention is that uh, obviously the Imam is sick, so he can't be louder. So there is this Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu standing besides Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr used to say Allahu Akbar loudly. And the one behind him used to say Allahu Akbar. So one person will be appointed by Imam or otherwise which is understood, they can make takbir in the prayer so that the people, the, there are rows which are behind the Imam will understand that Imam has gone to Ruku or Sujood, whatever it is. Another benefit which I mean, forgot to mention. Anything else? Any questions here? Adhan is, uh, see, the Salah Adhan is something legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be given. But in order to, in, for, for the Salah to be accepted, Adhan is not obligatory. You got my point? But the Adhan is, in its place, it is obligatory. But for the Salah to be valid, it can be without Adhan or with, with Adhan. Got my point? That's it, inshallah. Uh, avoiding, no, we can't avoid the other, you can reduce the sound or speakers, whatever it is. Wallahi, when I was taking some of the class in Makkah, uh, some people used to ask me about Adhan and I used to tell them, this was in 2019, many years back. I advise many people that do not raise the microphones in the massage, it's causing inconvenience for the people. Because there are non-Muslims who are staying around, many of them will not like it. 2019 to 18 I told this when I was teaching Zad al in Makkah. SubhanAllah. So people did not take it seriously. Now what happened? Automatically the kuffar is coming and telling us reduce the adhan. Reduce the volume. And some of the countries there is you can't give adhan openly. Now Fajr you can't give adhan openly. And other, other timings of the prayers you can't give loudly. What happens? If you do not follow this Quran and Sunnah, what happens? They will become a punishment upon us. Who? The kuffar becomes a punishment upon us. Yeah. So Adhan, it has to be reduced or lightened. That is much better. Wallah, before I accepted Islam, I used to hate people giving Adhan in the, in the Fajr. I used to watch these people screaming in the Fajr. So disturbance. What is this? And that too Adhan will not be beautiful on top of that. Some of the Muaddin, you know, they don't give proper Adhan also. Properly. I used, to, I used to get, uh, I used to detest, detest and I used to get angry eh, with these Muslims. They can't understand. They give louder, people are sleeping. Later Allah subhanahu guided me, so <laughs> that's a different uh, story altogether later. But then we need to keep in the mind that we are living in the Muslim mixed society. We need to take care of them. Yeah. Sorry? At home. If you are praying at home, Adhan is not required there. No. They come as enough, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Better, better. Better. One thing we need to understand, we have studied in the description of this. The question here is that, the question asked by uh, brother here, Barakallah Week. the question here is, uh, just now we studied that, you know, making the prayers lighter is much better than making the Salah longer. But in the previous Hadith, we have, dis we have discussed that Fajr and the Isha is shorter actually. Fajr, mainly Fajr is longer, is longer. So it's not that longer where people get tired, it's Mustahab. It is mustahab to recite those verses in the Fajr. One thing what we have to understand is that even if you do not recite any surah after Surah Al-Fatiha, your salah is absolutely valid. So there is no question of being obligatory there, isn't it? So you can make even one line or one surah, small surah or even Kulhu Allah Ahad, which is the shortest one, you can recite and lead the praise, absolutely no problem. But is afdal is to recite a little longer because the angels are witnessing your prayers and that particular time 
is a time where you know people do not have any haja you know what you say they are not in need of anything people are free generally people are generally free during the fajr time it's only after the fajr will be, people will become busy so you have to keep these things also in the mind inshallah so it is must have just to recite longer inshallah Are you talking in the masjid or generally some other places? Uh, there is something, you know, a natural instinct of human beings, you know, like naturally, a natural behavior of human being is that uh, if, we, for example, we are going for an excursion somewhere, okay, picnic or any picnic somewhere. So we know that this particular person is, deserves to lead the jama'ah. Automatically that comes in the mind, okay. But sometimes what happens, we are unknown. Sometimes what happens is we, nobody knows each other. We just got introduced. So one person goes ahead to lead the prayers. Since he stood there, pulling him back, it is not from the akhlaq. It is not from the akhlaq. So let him lead the prayers as long as he is a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Is it clear? No. Uh, no more questions, inshallah, we'll uh, conclude the class. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa barakallahu feekum wa jazakum khair. See you next week. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.